mean, spreadsheets kind of are dusty by rules. Hello, and welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today, I, as always, have a sewing project. This is, I think, week four of six weeks of spooky sewing. So we're deep in it, and I'm pretty excited to show you what I have for this week. So recently, I put up a poll on both my Instagram and my YouTube channel showing four patterns I was trying to choose between for a fabric, and I have the winner today. This is the winner. <laughs> it is, uh, like, pattern peasanty poofy sleeve blouse. Let's see if it has a description. A pretty dress with a deep square front neckline. The front bodice is cut in two sections giving a midriff effect. The upper bodice is gathered at the neck and lower edges. Pockets are optional in the side front seams of the full gathered skirt. View one features three quarter length sleeves. View two has short puffs sleeves. This was really interesting because the poll results were different across the two platforms. This one won on my YouTube poll and then I'll put the one that won up on my Instagram over here. And then it's interesting because the second from Instagram was I think the third on YouTube. It was just very fascinating. I think this one actually lost on Instagram. However, YouTube had just like more votes by like the number of subscribers I have there that are active. So I added up the results and this is the pattern that actually ended up winning because I have so many more people on YouTube than I do on Instagram. Your votes overwhelms the Instagram votes. But yeah, just a reminder that check that community tab and follow me over on Instagram if you want like the option to weigh in on things like this. That is the pattern and this is the fabric. I obviously showed the fabric before the vote as well. This is a really cute cotton stripe from Joann's. I actually picked this up last year in their Halloween collection, but I believe they also released it this year as part of their Halloween collection. I will link it down below if it is not sold out. I just suspect it will be sold out. It's this really cute orange and yellow stripe. I have five yards of the sky, which is plenty for the dress. That is the plan for this project. My plan is to cut out my fabric today and then check back in with you guys tomorrow and see if I can knock this dress out in one day, but we'll see. Um, but with that, let's go ahead and jump into cutting out this project. For cutting fabric, it is always important with stripes to really pay attention to your directions. So for this garment, I want all of the stripes facing up and down, except for the band around my waist, which I want to be horizontal stripes. So I'm just being sure with my cutting that I'm doing that. First, to cut the big square panels of the dress. I'm using just like a ripping technique so I can be lazy, save my blades, and I know I need like a certain number of pieces of these, so I am just using the same piece to basically cut and mark the next place for me to rip. This just worked really well for me. I got, you get really nice like squared edges and then things are less fray and terrible. And it is so much quicker than if I was to cut these. And then I am for the most part after this cutting things normally. For things that I can cut with it folded, let's call this hot dog style, I do that. And then I flip it and I do hamburger style for others. This is just me trying to basically use fabric as efficiently as possible because the more efficiently you use your fabric, the less waste there is. Good morning. I have finished the cutting. It was fairly easy and straightforward and I have some fabric left over, which is always nice and normal for me because I, since I tend to overbuy to make sure I'm not in the space where I don't have enough fabric because that is the worst. Anyway, it is almost 1030 in the morning. I meant to get started earlier as always, but it just didn't happen. But today I'm going to see if I can get this whole dress done in a day. What I'm going to do today for this video that I thought might be interesting is I'm going to sew the way I sew off camera. So when I sew on camera, I'm doing the steps very methodically in a way that's easy to explain to people. But when I sew off camera, I'm maxing efficiency. So it's not always clear. So I thought it would be kind of fun to show you guys like how I actually sew when I wanna get a project done quickly and not on camera. That's kind of the plan for today. Should be pretty straightforward. This pattern is really straightforward and I'm pretty excited about it. So with that, let's go ahead and hop into making this outfit. So to sew anything quicker, your goal is basically to do as much at the ironing board as you can before sewing and then sewing as much as you can and then ironing as much as you can to keep everything moving quickly. So here I'm starting by pinning all of my facings and then also getting my darts marked and pinned because I can do these at the same time. 
usually use symbol by unit, but if you're trying to sew more efficiently, it just doesn't make any sense to sew by unit. And in the same time that I am doing this, I am also putting the pockets on the skirt. The pockets take a few steps, so it's a good thing to get the skirt started right now while I am working on the bodice. And then we are just sewing all of these. So the real trick when you're doing kind of like quick production like this is to just make sure you're paying attention so you don't have to unpick. It's really easy when you're doing this many things to sew the wrong thing together. You just have to be paying attention, making sure you know which pieces you're doing, following your pins, making sure your markings are clear, all that jazz. Otherwise, you end up wasting time unpicking things. I did this all correctly here. I was working on everything kind of as planned. And then the other thing you have to watch for is certain pieces you have to baste versus actually like running like a normal stitch so I try to group those I believe here I was putting in my basting stitching for my sleeves as well as the bodice front piece where there's the gathering on both the top and the bottom and then another thing that improves efficiency is cutting all of your strings all in one go at the end so that way you aren't like stopping to pick up your scissors and cut and then sew and pick up your scissors and cut and then sew. This is just a quicker way of getting things done and you don't miss any threads this way most of the time because you check for threads on your seams before you put it back on your ironing table. So these are just all little things that can get you a little bit of a faster result. And then here I am trying to be good about pinking everything that needs pink in one go before then ironing. This is why Spooky is allowed on the ironing table right now is because I'm just pinking. And then I'm just ironing everything that needs ironing. So this is all the seams I just sewed, any darts I just sewed, everything like that. Just getting everything nice and pressed because just because you're sewing quickly doesn't mean you are not sewing neatly. It's really important if you're gonna sew quicker to not be cutting like tons of corners that make you not like the garment that you end up with. That is like never a very fun thing. And also for efficiency, I iron all the little things before tackling the big thing. So for the pocket, I clip that bottom of the pocket in the seam so I can press these nice and open so they'll look super clean and great. And I am doing that over and over again four times. And then we are also pinning here. Pockets just take a lot more construction effort than obviously no pockets. So this definitely took a lot of my brain power. And then from here on out, pardon me if you hear any loud blasting of music in the background, somebody has decided to plant themselves in front of my apartment in their car and play their music as loud as possible. And they've been there for 15 minutes and I'm determined to get this voiceover done tonight. So we're just gonna have weird car blurry noises in the background, I guess. So anyway, here I am getting all of, there's like a bunch of bias tape that I cut for this pattern and I'm getting everything gathered to fit into those bias tapes. Here I did extend the length of the bias tape for the sleeves because people just had a lot smaller arms back when these patterns were made than I do. I increased this by I think about an inch and a half and now I am just gathering it and I'm fitting everything down and figuring it all out. And then here I am sewing the bias tape to both the arms and then the little band at the top of the bodice. For the arms, what I do is I go around the whole parameter of the sleeve and then I sew a line down on those ends that I can then eventually flip up. It's kind of, I don't know, there's probably a better way to do this, but this is how I do it and it works for me. And then for the blouse front, it's a lot more straightforward. Here's where markings are important. Markings are telling me where I'm going to be clipping to, so I'm making sure to stop at those blue dots and keep my line within them. And then since our rule is to do as much at the sewing machine anytime we sit down at it, we are busting through a lot of other things like sewing down the pocket of the skirt. I sewed these pockets very similarly to how I sewed one of my gunny sack dresses a few videos back. I really liked the way they had you put in pockets. It made a lot of sense for me and so that's what I did here. And then I am also sewing down the facing edge so that way I can get ready to wrap up this bodice. And then in case it's helpful for me to give you a time check, this is right after I ate lunch. So I think we're only a couple of hours into this project. And then what I'm doing here is I have pinned the bias tape down to then hand sew it. It's that I didn't like having the pins going like sideways. I wanted them up and down. So I'm just real quick repinning this before I am then going ahead and going into my hand sewing. 
Again, when I'm going for max efficiency, I'm making sure to sit down and do my hand sewing in bulk, just like I'm doing everything else. So I'll be doing both sleeve cuffs as well as the bodice front bias tape. For a lot of modern projects, they'll have you just sew over the bias tape, like top stitch it. But since this is a pattern from 1940s, 1950s, they have you hand stitch the bias tape down. I think that's also a cleaner look. So that is what I'm doing here. And while I'm watching myself hand sewing and feeling myself relaxing, I just have to get one more thought about that person in their car blasting their music isn't gas expensive right now like it's like over five dollars in seattle a gallon still so like how do you have money to run your car to blast your music and annoy all your neighbors i don't know and then to get the bodice any further i need to get this front bodice part down so this is an exception where i am working by piece because this piece is what everything else is waiting for this one has more steps i guess than the rest so i have gathered this down to fit that band piece and now i am just pinning it and figuring that all out before i'm going to take it away and then i'm going to sew it and then after i have wrapped that up i will press it and make sure it looks all nice so that way now it's ready to get back in the flow with everything else we are working on. I did work on one more thing while doing this. I did go ahead and stitch up the back seam of the skirt. This is where the zipper will go. So some of this is basting. This is a good thing to do in a less hectic cycle because you need to make sure you stop the straight stitch and start the basting stitch at the proper point for the zipper. And now we can finally sew up those side seams on the bodice so that way I can put the facing in and that way the bodice and the skirt are ready to sew together. So here is me actually sewing those seams, sewing those side bodice seams. Since I'm at the sewing machine, I am going ahead and doing a narrow hem along the bottom of the skirt so that way when I fold it up and press it, it will still be clean and neat and perfectly finished. So again, we're doing multiple things while sitting down and doing a step. And while I'm here, I am also putting in the gathering stitches on the top of the waist. We're getting a lot done sitting here for our one sewing machine session before we get back up to press. So here I am gathering the seams. We need to finish this bodice in order to attach it to that skirt I just finished. I am putting in the sleeves. I'm gathering them. I am also putting in the facings in this step, which this does get a little bit muddled and you have to be careful with your sewing because your facings and your sleeve areas are so close to each other. In this case, I did the sleeves first and then I did the facing, but I sat at the machine for both of these because I didn't need to get up an iron in between. I just definitely couldn't pin them at the same time. So for things like this, I'll pin at my machine again to increase efficiency so I don't have to get up and pin at my ironing board. And then here we are sewing on the sleeves. Again, we are taking no shortcuts even though we're moving quickly. And so after sewing the sleeves to the bodice, I'm going in and I'm using some seam binding. Sadly, I've heard they're just continuing the seam binding that I use, which I'm really upset about, but I also coincidentally just ordered a ton. So basically I go around once, guess wrong sides together, and then I'm just folding it over and going over again, kind of like a bias tape but without like the four folds this one just has clean finished edges and then I don't need to get up and press those sleeves or the facing before I do the skirt I can still get up and do all of those at the same time so here I'm sitting at my machine I'm gathering this skirt down to fit in the waist so I can sew that together I also have my seam binding right near me from just using it which is what I will also bind the waist with and I still haven't gotten up from my machine. I am already going ahead and sewing that waist down. These are just all little efficiency tricks that can really help. It really adds up in minutes how much you get up and down from the sewing machine and like spend time warming your iron and stuff like that. So these are all just like efficiency things you can add into your sewing practice when you want to move a bit faster. I can't always move at the speed because it doesn't show the process as well for you guys. But if I am really like working on my own, this is how I sew and this is actually why I try to sew pieces off camera as well is just because they come together quicker and just take less time than it, everything I sew on camera. And we'll say it one more time for the people in the back. Just because we're sewing quickly doesn't mean we're sewing sloppily. I am again finishing this waist seam with some seam binding. Same exact process as the sleeves. So here I've cheated. I have gotten up from the sewing machine. I didn't show you guys, but I did it to iron in the stabilizer that I use in my zippers to make them go on nicer. Zippers are always a headache for me and I'm trying to make them a lot nicer. So I am going ahead and sewing this down. 
Moving to the last steps where again, I can't really work in unit because there's not that much left to do. So here I've gotten up, I have pressed my waist seam as well as my shoulder seams and my facings because those are all the things I have left to sew down and finish. And then I am also going ahead and pressing my hem using my gauge. Again, fast sewing does not equal sloppy sewing. So we are using our gauge. We are not just completely eyeballing. And if you want a nicer gauge, I used to use those like little metal ones that I hated. I have one very similar to this plastic one that I'm using here linked in my Amazon list of sewing favorites, which you can find down below. If you haven't tried one of these gauges over the like really, really cheapy ones, definitely recommend they're great. And what do we do at the end of a project? We hand sew and we annoy a cat. That is the rule here on my channel. So here I am just doing all the hand finishings. So I am sewing down that facing up at the top as well as putting in a hook and eye while Spooky tolerates me. And then once she leaves me is about when I start working on the hem, which I am again also hand sewing. But with that, I hope you've enjoyed this speedy, speedy sew and we will now jump into the reveal. I can't wait to show you this dress. the reveal. I think this dress is so cute, but before we hop into the wrap up, let's first talk about the cost analysis and breakdown of this. And my trusty dusty spreadsheet, I mean spreadsheets kind of are dusty by rules. For the fabric, I bought this fabric at Joann's for $10 a yard and I used four yards of it. So that brings me to a total of $40 spent on the fabric. The quality of this fabric was pretty, it was fine. I don't super prefer Joann's fabric if I can avoid buying it there, but it did do the trick. Notions were around $10. So that $10 includes zipper, seam binding, hook and eye, thread, all that jazz. I didn't use a full thing of anything on this, so I think $10 is about right. And then this pattern was actually only $24, which kind of surprises me since it is a 1950s peasant's dress. I must have bought this kind of back before the whole cottagecore craze really picked up. I think it would have been a lot more right now. But that brings us to supplies total of $74. I feel really good with this dress being $74. I think I really like it for that. I think that's similar to what I would pay if I was to pick it up from somewhere like Mod Cloth or like like the higher end brands on Mod Cloth. I forget which ones those are. I do think it would be around $74. However, when you factor in the cost of clothing, there is also the cost of labor. So while supplies only cost $74 for this dress, that's the only cost to me. If I were to sell this dress to somebody and have me pay myself for my labor, I would calculate how long it took me to make the dress and then and ideally you're paying yourself a living wage. So I worked on this dress for seven hours. This is a really fast dress for me and I think that's partially because of the way I so this like I wasn't filming. So I got it done really fast. So seven times 25 is $175. And that 25 number comes from $25 is the average wage of a Seattle seamstress. That's still actually below living wage here. Living wage here is 28 an hour. And that brings us to a grand total of $249. If I was to sell this to someone and pay myself for my labor. That is the cost breakdown I think that's a great price for this dress. I'm happy with what I paid for this dress, that $74 number. And let's dig into the dress itself. We start with the positives and end with the negatives. 
We're gonna try to reverse that. So we're gonna start with the negatives. As far as dress construction, there's nothing I would change about this. My seams are all super clean. I have seam binding on the waistband, on the arm seams, on everything like that. So I feel very happy about that. The one thing that I would change or deem a flaw of this dress is this line here that is supposed to hit right under your bust. It actually hits about an inch like across my bust. So I'm gonna write a note to myself that I need to expand this gathered bit by about an inch and then crunch this down by about an inch. This works overall for me. It's just the like ratio that needs a little bit of tweaking. I like where the waist hits. I like how everything hits. It's just that bust line. I don't feel like I figured out really how to do this bodice front properly. I think it's fine, but it's definitely like not 100% proper. On things I guess that I love, I think my pattern play, my straight play is absolutely perfect. My zipper is again way more beautiful than my zippers have been. I am back on the zipper game. This hem was so easy because this is the first like rectangle skirt I've done in a while and man it was nice. I forgot how easy doing the hemming of these are and I just think this dress is absolutely stunning and like I do think the fabric quality is like good enough. There are some fabrics in Joann's that I'll touch and like my sensory issues just can't take it. Obviously this one passed that test. I can pretty much only buy fabric fabric at Joann's in person because it's just so iffy on quality and whether it's something I can actually stand against my skin. I think that wraps this up. As always, you can support my channel by leaving a comment down below. Love to hear what you think about this dress, what you think about Joann's fabric quality, whatever you're feeling like putting out there. I love reading. Unless you're mean, then you get blocked. I rarely have that happen. I've maybe had to block four people in my whole time on YouTube. And then other than that, you can always give this video a like. Well, what's the other thing you do? Then of course, subscribe and stick around. And then the last thing that always helps me out and I always really appreciate is if you Wanna buy me a coffee over on Kofi? Spooky, hey, what are you eating? Did you just call Bug? I will hopefully see you next time, bye.